Hey, what's up everybody? It's Joshua Thomas Gray. Today we're gonna be hanging out with my buddy Greg Klassen. He's a like luxury furniture maker, uh, but it's more of like works of art. It's insane. We're actually currently standing in his shop, which is just located on his property. His house is just right out there. His family's just chilling, playing on bikes with their friends outside. It's gonna be an awesome episode. I hope you enjoy. My job was to sort through wood parts and garbage and different things. And so in doing that job, all of a sudden I had wood in my hands for the first time and we didn't have any furniture. We were newly married. We were really poor students. And so I took home wood, which coincidentally the job was in Washington and our home was in British Columbia. And I would commute internationally to get to work every day, just to work minimum wage as a garbage man because I couldn't work in Canada because I was an American citizen. I checked out every fine woodworking magazine that had ever been published at some point. I, hundreds of them, you know, every volume since, I don't know, 70s or whatever. And I read them cover to cover. I read every book on woodworking that the library system, both in Canada and in Washington State, had on hand. Um, I had stacks by my bedside. I just consumed it all. I was becoming really interested in the craft of furniture making and woodworking. And so I was really drawn to like how things were made, how they were made to become heirlooms, how some of these old antiques that I was reading about were held together for a hundred years. drawn to on this piece is how I feel like it's nature reflecting nature. I feel like this is a tree that may have grown by a river and when I play with it, when I open it up and explore its shapes, I find that the river that it may have grown next to reappears in its form and I just, I'm captivated by the natural shapes that these uh, edges create and I just imagine this is like a topographical scene as, as though you're seeing it from an airplane. So who knows, may become a piece of art or it just may remain firewood. I still remember my very first week at the farmer's market, I made $435. And I thought, oh my goodness, I could do this as a living. The riskiest idea I had was to not go into a job where I can make some money or save up before I started my business. But instead I was like, you know what, we're never gonna save any money when I'm working minimum wage. I've got a passion for it. I'm hungry for this. Let's just start a business. I'm going to call myself a furniture maker and we're just going to make it happen. I knew from day one that I wasn't interested in being rich. It wasn't about the money. It was about having a rich life. We knew that going in and we were okay being poor and living frugally. My wife and I delivered phone books. So one winter, I remember there was snow on the road and and the phone book distribution office was at the bottom of a steep hill. And I remember because we are like my wheels on my Toyota Corolla locked up and we skidded down the snow and it was super scary with our baby in the back seat. It was like 17 cents a piece. You know, like when I see material, I see all sorts of potential in it. And it's just to someone else, it's just a piece of wood. Right. Often even like a piece of firewood which for me is like an offcut from a, a larger piece that I set aside to burn. I'll find something in it and I'm like way more excited about this throwaway piece of wood than I was the huge expensive piece that it came off of. Right. Sometimes that just gets me all jazzed up. And uh, my wife understands a lot of what I look at and I'll sometimes bring her out to the shop and I'll say, check this out, this, and she'll be like, oh, 
and that's cool that that means something to you, but yeah. I don't know what you're talking about right now. Right. And I'll just have these thoughts and sometimes I'll chase that idea into form and make something and other times, you know, I'm like, uh, maybe I was a little too zesty about that idea. The thought that goes into the tables that you make is so vastly deep, it's crazy. I just bring my kids to this very river and we play. We just live a couple miles down the road and we're always by ourselves out here and the view of the river is always changing because the water's always moving like a log to a new spot or, or you know, after it rains there's more water and the beach changes and the shape of the shoreline changes and it's always moving, it's always alive and the colors are always changing so I take it a lot of inspiration from this river. You have to be fiercely optimistic. If you're truly going out on your own and you're taking the risk of being an artist, or even if you're an entrepreneur and just starting a business, it's gonna be hard. So by then I had three kids. I was still pretty much a starving artist. And in spring of 2014, I created this whole body of work that I was calling my river collection. It was tables, art pieces, created around the theme of water mostly rivers and lakes, using live natural edge wood and hand cut glass. I would get people coming into my booth and they would gasp. Like, oh, oh my goodness, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. They would run and get their friends to come see it. And there was this new buzz and energy about my work that had not been present at any shows when I didn't have my river tables there. And I was getting this emotional reaction from people and I had people say, man, this just makes this just makes me so happy to see this. It's like it's a piece of furniture and it's giving you joy. I'd never experienced that with my other work before, so I knew it really resonated at an emotional level with people. It was the it was a small design blog. Went to their website, found the little submission page, wrote off an email. Within an hour I hear back from him and he says, Oh, I love your work. Um, I'm gonna post something on it in the morning. I was like, oh, cool, that's so fun. You know, I tell my wife, hey, I actually heard back from one of the people that I wrote and they're gonna, he's gonna post something. What happened next has changed our lives from top to bottom. He wrote about my work, it went viral online overnight. I'd gone from struggling, starving artists to my work now gaining fans on every continent in the world, but I was at the very top of the front page of Reddit. My work just exploded. We, we're totally living our dream. Like, we dreamed up this life and now we're just blessed that it's happening. I it wasn't my dream to be so poor. I was blessed just to be an artist, whether I made money or not. My wife uh, homeschools our three kids who are now 11, nine, and six. I turn away work so that I can work a 40 hour work week, so that I can go on adventures with my family. And I turn away work so that my kids have a dad who says yes when they want to play. It sounds so obvious when you say it out loud, but I've been learning that the greatest predictor of who our kids will be is who they see us being. I just really enjoy what I do and I'm really proud of what, what I do. But what I'm even more proud of is the life that I've created. I'm proud of the kids whose hearts we're shaping. I'm proud of the marriage that I work out with my wife.